Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So today we're gonna to be doing a demonstration and I guess you could say tutorial on how to use Return to Home on the new Mini 4 Pro. Now the reason I'm making this video is there's gonna be a lot of people choosing the Mini 4 Pro as their very first drone. And they may be a little apprehensive of what happens during Return to Home or what happens if the drone becomes disconnected from the controller. There can be a little bit of anxiety associated with that. So in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate everything and I'm gonna go over some things you need to know about return to home in order to utilize it properly. Now, before we get into the demonstrations, there are a few things that I just wanna mention. There are three types of return to home. There's one that is initiated manually. That's where you actually hit the return to home button on the controller or within the app. That'll bring the drone back to where it took off from. There's a fail safe return to home. And that is basically if the controller gets disconnected from the drone the drone again will automatically come back to the takeoff point. The third is a low battery return to home. So if you're out flying, say you're a mile out, it's gonna calculate how much power it thinks it needs to get back safely, and it's gonna trigger a return to home when it gets to that threshold. And we're gonna demonstrate all three in this video. The other thing to note is that there's two types of return to home. This is the first year that DJI has included advanced return to home with a mini drone. With advanced return to home, basically the drone is gonna calculate everything and find the best route home. That means it could change its altitude and it could change its path. During the advanced return to home, it's gonna utilize its obstacle avoidance to make sure it doesn't run into any obstacles. The traditional way of return to home is you would set the return to home height in the settings once a return to home was triggered, the drone would stop, go up to that height, and then come directly back to you. Now, a couple things to keep in mind, if you're flying the drone at night or the environment is too dark, the drone will automatically cancel the advanced return to home and just use the traditional method. So even if you have advanced return to home set in the settings, it's always a good idea to still set your return to home height. So before you put the drone up, it's always a good idea to go in and set your return to home altitude and also you can make adjustments to the advanced return to home. And we do so by pressing the three dots at the top right hand side and we wanna be under the safety tab. We can just scroll down and you can see there under return to home, we have optimal and we have preset. Optimal is where it's gonna make its own adjustments as it's coming home. Preset is where it'll go to that predetermined altitude before it comes home. And we can set the auto return to home altitude to whatever we find works best for the area that we're flying in. You just wanna make sure it's set higher than the tallest obstacle. Now, sometimes that's not possible if you're flying around tall buildings, but then at that point, you know, just put to the legal maximum, which in Canada here is 120. If you're flying around an open field, you may wanna set that lower because you don't wanna waste battery power going up to that 120 meters. And lastly, the Mini 4 Pro is capable of precision landings. This is the first mini drone that is capable of precision landings. And basically what a precision landing is, normally when the drone comes home, it uses its GPS to get it to the approximate location of where it took off from. But with a precision landing, it's gonna utilize the cameras to kind of take a look around to see exactly where it took off from. For example, I'm gonna be using a landing pad here. So the drone is gonna look for that when it comes into land and try and land right in that exact spot. Usually it's pretty accurate, usually within you know six to 10 inches. In order to make use of that precision landing, when you take off, you have to go to at least seven meters before you start to fly out vertically. That way you can get a good look around. Also, when it's coming into land, the area cannot change. For example, if you move your landing pad or say you're standing close to the landing pad, it's gonna cancel that precision landing because it can't recognize the environment. Also, if you use the sticks, if you touch the sticks during a precision landing, it's gonna go ahead and abort the precision landing and just use its GPS to land. So with all that said, let's get out and do some demonstrations. So we've got the drone here and we're ready to go, but it's very important before you take off, you wanna make sure you have a good satellite connection. Right now I have 19 satellites and uh, we wanna make sure our home point is set because it's gonna be the home point that it utilizes in order so it knows where to come back to. And you can check the home point at any time by clicking on that map icon down in the bottom. You can see there that we have that big yellow H that signifies that a home point has been set. And you just wanna make sure it's in the general area where you are. Now you can adjust the home point at any time and I'm gonna make a separate tutorial on how to do that. So keep an eye out for that if you're not quite sure how to do it. If you're using the compass, again, you can see we have that yellow H. So both views will show you that the home point has been set. 
So I'm going to kind of go out of frame here just for a minute while we take off. That way the drone can get a good look around and I'm not going to be obstructing its view. So we'll go ahead, we'll start the drone up. Take off. And we'll take off. Now you have to remember we have to go up to at least seven meters and we can use our altitude gauge there at the bottom. So we're at eight meters. So at this point we can now fly out vertically. So let's go ahead, we're gonna put the drone out. We'll go out a couple hundred meters. So we are at 210 meters, so I'm gonna go ahead and trigger a return to home. We can do it one of two ways. We can use the button on the controller, press and hold it, or we can use that button on the screen. You can see we get an option to land, which obviously we don't wanna do because we're out over the water. So we'll press and hold the return to home button. Return to home. You're gonna notice the drone spins around and I'm actually going to get out of the way here of the landing pad. And uh, here you can see that virtual green line. Now at any given time, if you run into trouble or you think it's not going home properly, you can hit the pause button on the controller or you can hit the red, the red button there on the screen. And yeah, you can see that green virtual line showing us the past or the path that it's going to take. So the drone is right above us now. So the drone is right above us now, and you can see that the camera's automatically turned down. And you can also see that drone shadow has appeared. It's pretty small right now. It'll get bigger as it gets closer. And uh, that's just nice because it shows you where the drone is going to land. So you can see the drone is going into its location. And there we go. So that was actually pretty accurate. It's off by a couple inches. The front leg is off the landing pad, but uh, you know, that's pretty, pretty accurate. So let's go ahead. We're going to do another test. This time we're going to do a fail safe return to home. What I'm going to do is power off the controller while I have the drone out. Now for this one, I'm not going to send it over the water just in case something bad happens. I'm just going to send it down the road a little bit. So if I have to, I can go and retrieve it. But return to home is very accurate. The fail safe return to home is very accurate, very reliable. I've been flying DJI drones for many, many years, and I've never once had return to home not function correctly. So let's go ahead. We'll put the drone up again. Take off. And I'm gonna get out of the way so I can get a good look around. So we'll go up to our seven meters. There we are there. And I'm gonna go up a little bit higher. I guess I can come back in front of the camera for the time being. But this time we are going to head out this way down the road a little bit. That should be good. So we're 167 meters out. We're just above the road. Let me just uh, make sure. In this case, it just decides to land. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to power off the controller. So we are no longer connected to the drone. Actually, here you can see here the drone is coming back just as intended. There it is there. So I'm going to get out of the way so it can see the landing pad correctly. It's up there. It's hard to see, it's just a little dot right now, but it's coming down. And again, as mentioned, the controller is completely powered off, so it's just landing all on its own. So it's just taking a look around, lining itself up. And there it goes. And as you can see, it landed right on the pad again. Again, off by a few inches, but it's actually really, really accurate. Now, chances of your controller powering off on its own is not uh, very likely. Uh, but what will happen with these fail safes is you might fly out too far, or perhaps there's an obstacle in between you. You get behind a building or a tree line and it becomes disconnected. The drone will start its automatic return to home. But it most likely won't have to land like this because long before it gets home, it will reconnect automatically to the controller. So at this point, I'm just going to fly the drone around a little bit, just kind of burn down the battery, and that way we can demonstrate a low battery return to home. 
Okay, so we are getting low on power here and uh, it's gonna enter into a low battery return to home soon. Now, one thing you can do is if we press on the battery icon at the top there, it's gonna show us, it's gonna give us a timer of when it's gonna automatically return to home. So you can see there right now it says it's got a minute and four seconds, three seconds until it automatically returns to home. And if I was to turn around and start flying back manually, that number would actually get higher again because it's gonna intelligently calculate how much power it needs to get home. And I have to be careful because there's a couple big eagles flying around. Hopefully they don't uh, take my drone as a threat and decide to take it down. So yeah, we can see we're at 30 seconds or 40 seconds, 30, 20. Battery level is low. Aircraft will return to the home point in 10 seconds. So you can see there we got a message that the battery was low and it's going to return to home in 10 seconds. Now it's automatically returning to home. Now we can cancel this at any point. Like we can go in and uh, cancel the automatic return to home. If you think you have enough power, it's not a good idea to do because sometimes you're fighting wind on the way back and it's just a good idea when you get that message, just come on home. And sometimes even before you get that message. So you can see we have 22% battery power left. So that's cutting it a little close. The other thing you have to remember too is when the battery gets really low, it does lose power. So we can keep an eye on the battery level again. We can press that button. And you can see there in four minutes, it's gonna do a force landing. And in six minutes and 23 seconds, it's gonna be completely depleted. So the drone is almost here, so I'm gonna get out of the way and I'll let it do its landing. I can see it uh, above me now, or almost above me. And it's gonna come down and uh, look for that landing pad. Now you can see I am off. I'm going to be landing in the sand there. So I am going to push up on the stick just to put it back up and I'm going to hit that cancel. So you can see what happened there is that it was a little bit off the landing pad and I didn't want it to land in the sand. So I just pushed up on the stick that will force it back up. That just gave me enough time to hit the red X to cancel it. The other message you might get once in a while is that a message as it's going to land might pop up and say that the landing area is not suitable. For whatever reason, if it detects weeds or uneven surface, it won't go into the automatic landing. It'll just sit there and hover and wait for your input. You can just push down on the stick and force it to land if it looks good, or you can move the drone to a more safer location. Well folks, that's basically a quick demonstration of return to home. Hopefully if you're nervous about flying for the first time, you can see that there's a lot of fail safes built in there. So, you know, if you run into trouble, you get disconnected, you don't have to worry about, you know, going too far and not having enough power to get home. The drone is gonna manage all that for you. Now it's a good idea to keep an eye on all those settings yourself. You don't wanna totally rely on the software, but it's just nice that all these fail safes exist. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did, it's always greatly appreciated. And we'll see you in the next one.